Sophie, to you. You've heard quite a lot about her already. How and we are very, very privileged to have her in the temple with us. And I hope you'll ask her some questions and get her to talk a little bit about the temple. Om Seti was born in London in 1904, the only daughter of middle-class parents. She's been obsessed with Egypt since she was a... Once I lived in a place and they didn't know my son. And they called me Um Erevu after my eldest cat. <laughs> because in the village it's not polite to call a married woman by her real name. Om Seti's particular obsession is this temple at Abydos. She firmly believes she lived here in a previous existence more than 3,000 years ago. Well, it's a rather odd story. When I was three years old, I fell downstairs. And, of course, not unconscious. My parents fetched the doctor, who examined me very carefully and said I was dead. And as I was the one and only, um, the apple of my mother's eye, I mean, she went off the deep end and everybody was fussing around her. And I was left in my room, lying on the bed. And then the doctor said he'd return in an hour with a nurse to wash the body and uh, the death certificate, which he did. When he came back with the nurse and went into my room, the dead body was sitting on the bed playing, nothing the matter. The dead body was you? Yes. And the doctor apparently was rather annoyed with me. <laughs> my father was also very annoyed with the doctor. Why did he uh, give them such a scare? He, the doctor, swore that he knew I was dead. I mean, he'd done everything, every test, and I was dead, and that was the end of it. However, nothing, I mean, there was no visible injuries or anything, but after that, I kept crying and saying, I want to go home. And, of course, I was assured that I was at home, and I was equally sure that I was not. And I started dreaming about this temple here in Abydos. Abydos, or Abydos, is 350 miles south of Cairo, in the heart of a region where the ancient Egyptian religion once flourished, and it's always possessed a strange magnetic attraction. People came here as pilgrims over many centuries. The temple was built by one of the greatest of the Egyptian pharaohs, King Seti I, who ruled Egypt around 1300 BC. It was completed by his son, Ramses II. I dreamt about it not as a ruin, but as a going concern. But it wasn't until I was about six, and I saw a photograph of this temple in a magazine. But of course, as it is, now ruined. Once I recognized this place. This was the place where I was dreaming of, and it was my home. Also, a photo of the mummy of King Seti. I knew that man. He's a nice man, good, kind man. Of course, I was assured that I never did know him. And, of course, when my father explained to me about what the temple was and where it was, well, that explained to me why I wanted to go there and wasn't able to, because it wasn't where I am or I wasn't where it was. How did you explain this to yourself? I didn't. I mean, to me, that I belonged there and I had to go there. And all my life, I would never say, if I go to Egypt, it was always when I go to Egypt. When did you first go to the British Museum? Oh, I went to the museum first of all when I was four. But Mother said I wasn't taking any notice of anything till they got to the Egyptian department. And then I just went crazy. I went and sat down by a mummy in its glass case. When they were ready to leave and called me to come, I refused to come. So Mother came to pick me up. And she said, I yelled out. And in a very unusual voice, I said, leave me. These are my people. You see... I haven't got a degree from a university. Therefore, I couldn't be, you know, among the uh, high-class officials. So I was taken on as skilled workman. What did that mean? Well, it means um, not somebody who just digs and hauls stone about. I have done that. <laughs> 
but it means somebody with a special skill. What was your feeling when you first came here? Well, I felt, I mean, first of all, I'd really come home. And again, I mean, that, um, well, I'd come to my holy place. It's the memorial of King Seti that most tourists come to see, but this was sacred ground long before the temple was built. Dr. Rosalie David is keeper of Egyptology at the Manchester Museum and knows both Abidus and Om Seti well. Dr. Roslinga. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> Good. Have you been able to go across to the temple at all? Not yet, but I, I mean, I can go. Yes, yes. I've been practicing by walking oh, as far as you <laughs> Well, we have a magazine for you, which uh, you probably like oh, to see. Oh, thanks. I haven't seen one since June. Oh, golly. It's... Have you still got the cats? Are they here? I have some. I had seven, known as the Mafia. <laughs> Rosalie David wrote her doctoral thesis on the painted scenes in the Temple of Seti I, which so vividly portray the religious rites of ancient Egypt. You did a jolly good work on the rites. You think it's... Mm. Uh, I enjoyed doing it so much. It was uh, um, fun. You know that uh, Indian ambassador, uh, Dr. Appaplant? He came here quite a lot when he was uh, ambassador here. Yes. And he was very interested in uh, the rites because they do it now in India. Yes, I gather they're pretty much the same sort of pattern. Yes. Feeding the god. And, and he said, um, I mean, in their family, the high up Brahmins, I suppose, they have these little shrines in the home. Yes. And the head of the household performs all these rites every day. And it takes the same pattern as the yes. mm. ritual. He kept me supplied with incense when he was here. You know that lovely <laughs> You used to use incense in the temple here, mm. uh, in the rites. Oh, yes. 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 Well, they use it all the time. Yes. Did you carry out rituals on the festival of Osiris? But it was a very complex world, this world of ancient Egypt, with its multitude of gods, both in animal and human guise, and its elaborate rituals and ceremonies. When you first walked inside the temple, what happened? Well, I mean, it was as if I walked in, into a place where I had lived before and knew all about it. And somebody was from head office was here at the time, and they knew about my idea that I'd been here. And they recognize anybody from the reliefs. Oh, Seti, the King Seti. I had an idea that I had known him. He was always my my hero. I was always hoping that. If if I ever married, I'd marry someone like him, but of course, I never did find anybody like that. They don't make them these days. And also, there was that feeling I've had at the beginning and always have had and can't get rid of, the idea that Ramses was a young boy, a young teenager, kid about 14 or 15, older than he is in the reliefs but still a youngster and very active and energetic and rather noisy but quite amiable and the father is always to me rather grave rather serious but very kind and gentle man But how does Omseti explain her strange insights into an earlier existence? Well, I wonder, either the fall downstairs not to screw loose, when yet everything was so, what shall I say, 
logical after that. I mean, the obsession. I mean, if I had a screw loose, I might dream about a temple, but not that one particular temple and dream about it correctly. And then some people have suggested I might really have been dead and an ancient spirit got in. What do you think? I think probably that might be. It's just simply, I was in a place which I knew very well, and no difficulty in getting about it. And of course, I mean, working here and living here, well, I suppose I became so familiar, I will say, if God ever preserve it from happening, if the temple fell down, I think I could tell them where all the stones go to put it back again. <laughs> How do you like living here? Oh, I love it. I mean, life here is... Well, it's not really plain sailing. Never is in any village. I mean, life's hard here, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't live anywhere else. I haven't got here. You see, maybe I, I was an only child, and so I was accustomed to playing alone. I only feel lonely if there's no animals around. If there's animals around, well, I don't feel lonely. <laughs> of course, what I do miss sometimes, I mean, is um, people to talk to, you know, on mutual pet subjects. My neighbours here are intelligent people. I'm a very intelligent man. But I mean, um, he's not much the way of an Egyptologist. Hey, <laughs> 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 Tell her, Tasha. Tell her, Tasha. And A lot of people know your name and come to see you. Do you feel as if they're rather making a pilgrimage to you? No. You see, sometimes people have written articles about me in the paper. Usually quite a lot of nonsense. And then people read these, and they want to see the horrible specimen in life. And then people who come on cruises and have met me here, and then they mention me as being sort of among the monuments to their friends. So when they come, they want to see me. Then he had said he had another son who was a real hero. <laughs> we have to go, I'm afraid. Oh dear. Yes. Thank you. Well, Thank you I so have much. enjoyed meeting you all. Well, we have enjoyed meeting you. Yes. Thank you. You've Thank made you. our day. Well, you've made mine. <laughs> <laughs> so we hope you have many happy days. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Anyway, it was lovely to see you. And soon. thank you so much for talking to me. It's been splendid. Oh, well, you know. Talking is no hardship. Get that, Dr. Mike.